Uh, abuse in football just seems to mainly be, you know, it's all, it's all verbal, you know, it's all name calling, calling you cheat, saying you're biased, it's all that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, the odd threat comes your way, you know, lad has been sent off, not happy with you, lad who just wants to throw his uh, toys out of the pram, stuff like that, wouldn't they? Mainly in my time it's only been vocal, I haven't had anything where someone's come up and hit me or anything like that, but it's just the things that, when a decision's not gone their way, they're annoyed, so it's all, oh, come on ref. It will start with that and then it will then proceed on to the, the swearing and the bad language and things like that. I've had a little bit that's just been like bullying, like try, trying to be intimidating and just like sort of picking on my appearance a bit. But uh, I've been quite lucky really, you know, you hear referees that have had uh, physical stuff, but me, myself, it's just verbal. Uh, when I was refing a couple of months ago, uh, I got threatened to get stabbed by a player after I've been touched by a manager. And the pl the player decides to try and try and push me because he was calling me things. So I went over to him, sent him off, and then he decides to like push me in and say, "I'll I'll stop you at the end of the day." But then, as I turned back up to face, there was a player coming towards me, and he sort of chest bumped me and said and um, told me I'd effing ruined the game and by sending the keeper off because they only had ten players anyway. And he then just grabbed me by the throat and sort of pushed me away. So I abandoned the game. And... In the younger age groups, it's mainly just the spectators because the younger players, they just want to play football and enjoy themselves. Whereas then when you get into the older age groups, they want to win more. So then the players start and then you've still got the spectators on your back. So it's a lot worse, say, probably adults or under 18s. Well, I've had a couple of issues with managers at, at, at half times. They've had a massive shout at the, at the players, and you can tell the difference between how when the manager ain't on the back, they play better, but when the manager is on the back, they're all angry, and then then the players get cautioned and sent off. It's always parents, you know, parents competitive because they want the they want the kids to succeed. They want the kids to win trophies. They want to see the kids happy, and if you're there and you're giving free kicks against them and stuff like that, they're just not going to be happy. So it is, it's, the, um, it's the spectators and the managers, you know, the managers want some pride in the kids and sometimes they don't set the best example, which is unfortunate. Um, it depends what age group it is. In youth football it's sort of more parents, like mini soccer it's more parents. And in um, the higher up youth game, so like under 14s, under 15s, it's a bit more players, a bit less parents, but by the time you get to adults it's normally just players or managers. Usually it's, I, I find that it comes from out of the technical area, the dugout. I think they should take some responsibility for that. The technical area, if the manager's jumping up and down and screaming abuse, etc. Then unfortunately the players seem to think that they can do the same thing. I think sometimes it's worse the older the age they get, um, because they uh, start to make their own decisions. Um, and, you know, aren't so much dictated from the people on the line. As, you go, as players certainly go up the levels, they sort of realise you need a referee, you know, you can't have a football game without a referee. So probably the lower the levels is where you start to get, it's where you get the, you know, your lad who turns up after having a drink on a, uh, on a Saturday and just wants to have a go at you. So I'd say it gets better as you go through the levels because they've started to realise that you're needed there. You, they can't do it without you, if you're honest. So. Yes, we sometimes have to have thick skins. I think... A lot of it you just ignore and you um, you try and iron it out and just th think positively because you know that it could affect your game. It doesn't normally bother me too much. I mean obviously the physical abuse sort of shape chucked me up a bit and the player grabbed me around the throat but the verbal abuse sort of deal with it. I mean I, I'm quite thick skinned so I sort of just brush it off like oh, that's nothing or, but I mean, when it's sort of picking on my appearance, obviously because I've got spots, that's only happened really on one occasion, but sort of, I'm a bit sensitive about that, so that sort of got to me a bit, but. Um, I feel like guilty in a way, as if I've done something wrong, even if I haven't, and it just like makes me want to just stop the game there and just say, well, if you're not happy with me, then I'll stop, and just like stop refereeing altogether. I think I think it depends what uh, what abuse you get. Sometimes it's 
sometimes you find yourself thinking, actually, that's quite clever what they've said to you, and you laugh it along, you can join in the joke and stuff, but, you know, if they're really going for it at you, it's just not, you know, it can, not your confidence, I think, is the worst thing. I'd never say I'd, I'd get upset or anything, you sort of get used to it, but, um, no, I'd just, just say sometimes as your confidence goes, you see the big penalty decision, you don't give it, you do give it, you have some lad chirping in your ear, and you have spectators all right at you, and you can just... You can go to your shelf for the next 10 minutes or something, it can take a lot to bring you out. And then when the next decision comes along, your confidence is gone and you need something uh, to bring it back in a way. And then, obviously, that game, I had quite a poor game, I think. And, and the players obviously picked up on that and they were a bit, they were on my back a lot. And I just thought, do you know what, it's not worth it, I don't want to do it anymore. Uh, the spec campaign's done a massive amount of work, if we're honest, with working referees. You know, um, one metre barriers around pitches, big help keeping spectators off the pitch, letting us deal with what we've got in front of us rather than having to think of outside stuff. Even little things, sort of, some leagues have still had the handshakes for the game, you know, gives you a chance to chat to a player, maybe crack a joke as he's walking past. It really gets them onto your side, which is always nice to see. Just, you know, even if you've got a respect band, you can just sort of point to it and go, look, I'm the same as you. Just because I'm a referee doesn't mean I'm here to tell you off and be a teacher. and. Uh, you know, be in charge. I just want to come out here and enjoy some football. Um, I think it's helped improve it because when you go through a set approach you're sort of building a little relationship up with the player because instead of in the past where it would be they'd make three or four bad challenges and then that's it, you give them the caution now you're talking to them like throughout so they think, oh this referee actually understands me, he's not so bad and they'll actually, I think they listen to you a lot more if you go through the stepped approach, just like the little quiet word and then obviously build it up rather than just giving him a caution just after four tackles? Quite well actually, um, I've been able to, like I say, control players um, and so sometimes if they're getting a bit wound up it's nice to throw in the stepped approach and uh, take it, you can kind of take them under your arm a little bit and uh, just help them calm down. At the start of every game I give a brief to my captains. If the captains work with me I work with them, so we try and play nicely and the cars don't come out. But if someone steps out of line, I use my captains. If the captains don't really get onto him and it's about half time, I use my managers. If if nothing's happening then I have to use my cards after telling the player not to do this, not to do that. Obviously each time they do something wrong, you're then pointing out what they've done wrong and just give them a little word or obviously when it gets to the point where it's the public one. Um, I think it then lets everyone know on the pitch what they've done wrong and I think it helps them understand what a referee expects as well, not just the law of the game. The set approach is definitely one of the most influential and best techniques to use in football. It's, you know, when you, it really helps you keep control. Um, it makes other people aware because obviously you start and you're just talking to a player, people might not see that. But if you also have to stop a game, bring a captain over, People are going to see you and just go, right, something's seriously wrong now, we need to grab this guy by the back of the neck and he's really going to help us. And after that, then you're starting to brandishing cards. In a way, it gives players more of an opportunity to realise what they're doing wrong and to stop it, which is always good. But it also gives you a chance to keep control of the game and show others what, you know, that you're not happy and things are starting to go wrong. So. Um, I usually tell them, remind them that it's a game, tell them just to have fun out there. Um, I'll bring the linesman in as well so I can um, tell them all what I expect of them so that you don't hear players left, right and centre shouting um, oh well, the linesman's flagged that, I've told them what I want them from them um, but yeah just tell them that it's, they're playing for fun. I say to them like if you respect me I respect you whatever I give I'll play to it as possible as I can and I'll only give what I can see just take a bit of responsibility, bear up, you know. I'll see, I'll bring them in, 
and then I'll make sure that each time you shake hands, um, and then I'll just say along the lines of try not to swear, especially in the younger ages, like uh, under 15s or below, because really they shouldn't be swearing at that age. So I'll point out, just try and keep the swearing to a minimal. Um, don't, like, don't mock other players when they make a mistake or anything like that. Um, and if you are going to have an argument, make sure that it's not ridiculous. You're not going on for, say, it's in the second minute of the game, you've had an argument, it's not then affecting you in the 90th minute. If you're going to say something, say something and leave it. Because I will come up to you and say, obviously, you've done that, you shouldn't have done that, you shouldn't have said that. And then I think you should be able to leave it at that. And then I'll just point out, obviously, the fact that the tackles, just try and watch the tackles. I appreciate in football you will miss time a tackle, but just don't go flying in double footed on someone for no reason. I've I've always loved football since I was really young and obviously I, my dad's had a lot to do with that um, just I've grown up around football watching him play and things like that and I just I love it I enjoy playing when I played and so I just want to be involved in the game I enjoy it because I think it makes someone a better person because you've got you take the bad points of it but then you take good points so I think it moulds a person if they're a referee or an official of any kind they learn both sides of life, like the good and the bad. Um, I also enjoy it because it's helping children out. Because obviously, if there's not, if there's no referees, people can't play football. And I've always played football myself. And so like I had a year or two out because of injuries, and I hated it. So it's just the understanding of if I wasn't doing it and no one else was doing it, people couldn't enjoy the football. I do enjoy refereeing. Like I, I enjoy. I did a bit of banter with the players and obviously I was never the best player and sort of it helps me stay involved in the game and I just just really enjoy it. Quite recently there's been quite a few times where I've um when parents have been like giving dissent from the sideline, I've gone over and had a little word with them and then at the end I've had like managers and players come up to me, oh Joe, you handled that really well. And things like that, and it, I think it makes me feel better about myself knowing that I was right to do what I did. Well, you get it on quite a regular basis. The players do usually come up and shake your hand um, after the game, which is quite nice. Um, say you had a good game ref and so on. Um, the managers shake their hands at the end of the game. I've never really had a problem with managers. Um, at the end of the game, they always shake your hands, tell you you've done well, even if you know you haven't sometimes. I think there's always someone there to talk to, you know. Uh, other referees are very supportive with each other. Every other referee will come and put their hand around you. Derbyshire are very, very supportive. Gem is always there and stuff like that to help you. A referee is going to get dissent during a game and that's going to make them feel down. And if you then get the players and managers coming up to you afterwards saying, oh, well done ref, you did this well, I think it makes it gives refereeing a brighter side. Obviously, being part of the Referees Academy, there's a good support network there for it. I know that Gem is just on the end of the phone or in email away, so I can, I've got a good support network if I need to talk things through about anything at all. I think respect, you know, if you go to a game and you don't get a bit of respect, you've probably done you know, quite a lot wrong. There's always one, there's always one lad in the team I think you should always look for. You should always look for one, whether it be the captain or whether it be someone else to come and help you. Uh, put your arm around him, let him put your arm around you and together. If he just walks past you and say, ref, you got that right, ref, I think that was a penalty, something like that, you know you've done it well. And even just a simple handshake after a game, crack a smile. Uh, if you go for some food or you know for a drink after the game, there's always one that comes up to you and goes, ref, I don't think you got this right, but I think you got this right. And you can sit and you can chat and it's just, the respect on the pitch is just, it's really improved recently and we can, um, you know, just as, you, just as you're walking past the lad, he'll help you and he'll just chat to you and it's always nice to see that compared to probably when you were younger and you didn't so much get, you know, a grown man running past you and saying, look, I think you got that right, actually. So it's good to see it. Because obviously if, if there's no referees, people can't play football. 